Good day, and welcome to the UFC 164 Media Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Dave Schaller. Please go ahead. Thank you, Camille. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the UFC 164 Henderson uh, versus Pettis Conference Call presented by Harley Davidson and the Hometown Throwdown Saturday, August 31st from the BMO Harris Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Today we are joined on the call by UFC lightweight champion Benson Henderson, Anthony Pettis, and a pair of former UFC heavyweight champions Frank Mir and Josh Barnett. At this time, Camille, let's go ahead and open it up to the first question. Thank you. If you'd like to ask a question today, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you are using your speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, that is star 1 to ask a question. We'll take our first question from Stephen Morocco with USA Today Sports Media. Hey, guys. Um, question first for Anthony and then for Ben. Pretty much the same question. Uh, when this fight was announced, uh, there were conspiracy theories right off the bat about whether T.J. Grant was ever, you know, the, the legitimacy of T.J. Grant's injury. I'm wondering if you guys were aware of those and, um, and what your reaction to them was, whether you thought uh, what your response to those conspiracy theories were. Maybe we could start with Anthony. Yeah, um, when I got word that uh, T.J. Grant got injured, man, um, it, was, it was surprising to me. I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't happen much. You know, two title fights uh, have to pull out due to injury, you know, back-to-back -back months. So, uh, you know, it was very surprising to me. And uh, the, way, the, way, the way the fight lined up, man, it, it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, with my injury, with my knee to you know, me pulling out of Jose Alvo's fight, to T.J. Curran getting injured, uh, allowing me to step in and fight Ben Henderson. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of conspiracy theories popping up, but, uh, you know, my, my injuries were legit, and from what I know, T.J. Grant's injuries were legit. No, Ben, for Benson? Yeah, on my part, um, there's always any conspiracy theories with, with everything, uh, so... You know, it is what it is. I mean, there's a, a lot of crazy circumstances behind um, a lot of that stuff, you know, but it is what it is. And once I found out the fight was, you know, going through and was happening, I, I, was, I was excited for it. It's been the one I've been waiting for for a while, so I was, uh, it was fine by me. Do you think fans have an overactive imagination when it comes to stuff like this? Yeah, I yeah think, for sure. Uh, no, go ahead, Anthony. Okay. Yeah, I think I think for sure. I mean, fans, uh, fans don't see the training that, that goes into these fights, and I mean, injuries happen. They're, they're part of the game, and I mean, when when it when it happens like that, you know, I got to pull out of a 145 pound title fight, you know, to fight at 155. Like I said, that doesn't happen much. So, uh, you know, I'm sure the fans, you know, had their opinions on on what happened. I think yeah, um, not necessarily like a overactive imagination like that, but you know. Um, there's armchair quarterback in Monday morning uh, during football season. Every 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 person's an uh, armchair quarterback. Same thing for MMA. It's good though. You know, helps the helps the sport. You know, keeps people talking about it. Um, but yeah, sometimes uh, the reasonings and the uh, imagination they they can't get a bit out there. Yeah. And again, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star one. We'll take our next question from Ron Crook with Inside MMA. Hi, Matt. Thanks for taking my call. A uh, quick question for both Benson Henderson and Anthony Pettis. Guys, your fight in the WEC will go down in history as one of the best, most entertaining fights ever. What do you guys feel about the rivalry between you two? Is there one, and and is it up there with some of the greats like Liddell versus Kotor? Benson, if you could go first. Uh, I, I guess I don't. I don't really think of myself in that light, in that manner. I'm not one of those guys who consider my consider myself. Um, you know, I, I don't think of myself as a Chuck Liddell or a Matt Hughes or any, any one of those guys. Uh, as far as that goes, it's kind of weird to, to think of yourself like that. Um, so no, I don't really consider myself um, in in the you know shoes of any any of those greats. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is. It's not my place to put a name on it and call it what it is. That's, that's for you guys to do. That's you know, that's the media's job. That's the fans' job to call it what it is. Um, my job is to go out there and beat people up. That's it. Anthony. 
Yeah, I mean, ben, me and Ben, I mean, I wouldn't say we have bad blood or rivals or anything. I mean, he's a champ, and I want that belt. I mean, that's that's, that's all there's to it. You know, nothing personal against him. He's a cool guy, great champion, great fighter, and, uh, you know, he has the belt. And, and that, that was my goal set, it, you know, set off when I started this thing. So, uh, you know, for me, it's just a matter of whoever has that belt at the time, that's who I want to fight. And you know, Ben's story, the storyline is amazing. I mean, last fight was in his hometown. This time it's my hometown. Um, there's so many storylines behind it, but... uh. I mean, it is what it is. You know, he's a champ, and I'm the challenger, and, and I have my work cut out for me. Very good. And then a, a quick question uh, for Josh Barnett. Josh, I think the fight fans are extremely excited to have you back in the Octagon for the first time since 2002. Can you give us some details on just how the negotiations went with the UFC? Honestly, it's just negotiations like anything else. I mean, there's really nothing special to it. One person says, I'll give you five bucks. Another person says, well, I want ten. And it all gets worked out eventually in the end. A lot of papers get pushed around. Pencils are moved. Some are dropped if there's not chicks in the room and you want to see them pick them up. But either way, uh, you just you, you, you just go to the business table and, and you, you do what you got to do. And it's been so long. Honestly, all I know at this point is how to punch stuff, sweat, and scream in pain from excessive workouts. That's it. That's all I know how to do is, is to, to suffer and, and, and be murderous because all I do is train right now. Um, negotiations, furthest thing from the past. There's no negotiation anymore. It's just there's really only one verdict. Final question on that note, then. How would you describe your relationship with Dana? Um... Well, you know, I haven't seen him in a little while. He's been real busy traveling around, but uh, I think uh, we've got a tentative day to go out and, you know, break bread and maybe go catch a movie and hang out and get a couple's massage here soon. Please get video of that. Thanks, guys. We'll take our next question from Dave Debert with Post Media News. Hi. Uh, thanks, you guys, for the time. Uh, first one uh, for, for Josh and Frank. Uh, now, there's the obvious um, immediate ramifications in the uh, in, in the division, but I'm wondering if there is any sort of bragging rights, as as either of you see it, being uh, you know a lot of similarities. Uh, early Zufa heavyweights, you know, strong submission games in the heavyweights, especially. You know, is is there anything uh, as far as you know just the bragging rights that would come with a win that either of you were thinking about? <laughs> Well, uh, I, if you the winner, I guess if they want to, they get to brag all they want. I suppose. I mean, if that's the, the route they want to take. But uh, when it comes to the heavyweight division, there's you don't really know how things are going to turn out until after the fights have all have all been done and the dust is settled. And uh, there's a lot of guys out there all fighting for the same opportunities as us. But um, as far as you know, Ziffa heavyweights or whatever, I'm the oldest Ziffa anything. I, in fact, I'm pre Ziffa, so for me, it's that's uh, not even a consideration. I, I'm the longest running guy in this sport. Period. All right, uh, Frank, uh, what about uh, you? Well, I guess I'm a little bit differently. Obviously, we all are fighting for the uh, eventually to become the champion again. But because you know Josh was the champ when I first got into the UFC. There's a different dynamic of how we look at each other. So I look at his bragging rights to have a victory over somebody like Josh, reason being of, uh, you know, where he was when I first came in and then what he's done with his career this whole time. Okay. And then another one for the, for the both of you. Um, you know, you're both very analytical, so I'd like to get your opinions. If you guys had fought back in, uh, you know, 2002, 2003, who would have won back then? I don't think he could expect the answer from either one of us as, other than me. Uh, and especially at this point, uh, before a fight, uh, a fighter's mindset is, is always ultimate and unflinchingly uh, de uh, absolute belief in oneself. So, uh, you know, back then, I guess you want to go on paper, I had a lot more fights and more experience and whatever, but, you know, hey, Frank was going out there and beating plenty of experienced guys and tapping them out. Uh, I think people would have been interested to watch the fight back then uh, just as much as they like watching the fight now. Yeah. Uh, I think that we would have fought back then if I would have the fight to Josh. I think that mentally I wasn't as prepared and not as strong. I think Josh could have been in his career out of a very strong mindset. 
mine not so much. I think it's developed over the years and acknowledging that it was weak to begin with to even work on it. Um, so I think that, you know, I had an opportunity early on in the fight maybe to get it, uh, a submission to catch somebody, but if the first couple of submission attempts would have failed, I think I would have been in a lot of trouble. And as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1. We'll take our next question from Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Hello, thank you for the time. My first question is for um, Vincent. Being that you want revenge over Pettis, uh, do you view this title defense as being different than any other one in your career? No, not not really. I guess mm -hmm. it's, it's the same. I mean, obviously it's a little bigger because I've only lost once in the past seven years. Uh, it happened to be to Anthony, so... Of course, uh, you can say, you know, you want to get the ba loss back. You can't really get a loss back. So if you lose, you lose. You got to move on, man up in life and that sort of stuff. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, it will be nice to, to score off with them again, get my hands on them. I'm going to get my hands on them, that's for sure. Uh, but it, it's just another fight. It's just another fight. It's just another title defense. There are always going to be new circumstances to fight. There's always going to be a, a different this, a different that. First time, you know, in the UFC, first time on pay-per-view, first time main event, first time main card, first time this, first time that. So, I mean, you're going to have a different circumstances every time you fight. Uh, that being said, you have to treat, you know, all every fight, you know, like it's um, the most important thing there is because that's really what they are. It doesn't matter what the, what the, what the circumstances are. It's the most important thing it is that, uh, you know, every career so far. So uh, that's why I'm treating this fight. And just another question for you, if I could, Vincent. Uh, in your first fight with Anthony, he was actually able to neutralize one of your biggest weapons, the takedown. Uh, I looked up fight metric. You landed 3 of 10 over the course of the fight. How do you work to change that, and what kind of preparation have you done in order to change the tides with that? Oh, well, well you know, it's something you got to just continually work on. Always just trying to get better, uh, not just your takedown, but your, your takedown setups. Uh, your not your first initial takedown, but your second second attempt, third shot, uh, you know your re shots. Um, it's, it's all just stuff like everyday daily stuff. You you try and get better. You always, you always try and get one percent better. Uh, improve your takedowns, improve your your hands, your kicks, everything. Uh, it's something I've been working on a lot. You know since that fight. Uh, you know it's evident in my fights, my whatever seven, six, or five fights I've had since then. And, um, you know, went out there and I'm going to go do, you know, what I did in, in those seven fights since. I'm going to try to do the same thing uh, in this fight. Good, thank you. And for Josh Burnett, you've been away from the UFC for about 10 years. It's your second stint. What, for you, do you see is going differently this time around? What do you expect from this run? Uh, well, first time around, I went all the way to the top and won the heavyweight championship of the world. I don't expect any different, um, other than to get probably paid a lot more money and get a lot more stardom and fandom out of this whole thing because of the explosion of MMA as a whole. Uh, probably a lot more Twitter followers. That would be my number one. Cool, thanks. And one last question for me for Frank Mir. Uh, Josh has never tapped to a submission. How do you approach this fight, knowing that it kind of takes away what the both of you are, are best at? It kind of cancels it out with the way that you both are able to attack uh, on the ground game. Well, I think that I mean, I've fought people before that have never tapped and caught them in submissions. I think, you know, you have, a, you have to have a respect and a knowledge of what your opponent is capable of, but at the same time, you can't let it nullify your offense. You can't sit there second guess yourself and go like, well, I'm not going to go for this because you'll obviously block it. I think that's when sometimes respect goes to too much into apprehension and it causes you to hesitate. I think that you just fight the fight and prepare to know that, you know, that I'm going to probably have to link four or five, six different attempts together. Obviously, I don't see Josh falling, you know, victim to the first submission attempt that I just jump on. Uh, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm not going to go and attempt it anyways. Great. Thank you for the time. We'll take our next question from Damon Martin with BleacherReport.com. Uh, yeah, first question is for Benson. Uh, Benson, we know the first fight with you and Anthony was a classic, and it was a phenomenal five-round fight, but you've had to see that Showtime kick highlight a million times by now. Uh, you're seeing all the promos leading up to this fight. Does it? I mean, seeing that, does it serve as motivation? Do you get sick of seeing it, knowing how close that fight was, and maybe it just came down to that fifth round? I mean, does any of it bug you that it all comes down to that one moment? 
Man, that's the way uh, life goes sometimes, you know? Uh, one small moment. Uh, what was, what's the Eminem song? One moment or whatever, however it goes, you know? Uh, that's the way life goes, you know? You prepare yourself, prepare yourself, get ready. You know, have weeks and weeks and weeks and months and years of preparation, get ready uh, for what? For one moment. Um, you know, hopefully you don't falter during that moment. Um, you know, for me, the, the whole fight, uh, you know, was pretty close fight. Pretty, I think uh, on all the judges' scorecard, if you look back, all the judges' scorecard had it uh, tied up 2-2 uh, going to the fifth round. So, yeah, it was a uh, you know, super close fight. Came down, came down to it. Uh, Anthony, you know, let it all out, landed a, a pretty, you know, cool kick. Uh, and ever since, I've been, uh, you know, working to uh, redeem myself. And for me, you know, winning the belt, uh, beating up the next guy, beating the guy after that, beating up the guy after that. You know, that, that to me was, uh, you know, redeem myself, uh, working past that, that one moment in my life, you know, making other great spectacular moments like in, you know, Tokyo, Japan, like in Toronto, like in Milwaukee, Wisconsin against Jim Miller, like in, uh, San Jose against Gilbert Melendez, uh, making other moments. Um, to me, that's, uh, kind of what helps it. And a quick question for Frank Mir. Uh, Frank, you, you've been near the top of the division for, for years, and I've talked to you about this before. You know, it's a rare thing, you and Josh both for that matter. Uh, but, you know, coming off a couple losses, I mean, two fights ago, you're fighting for the title, one more loss, and people are somehow thinking that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're no longer a top heavyweight. Uh, what, what are you fighting for at this point? I mean, is it still about title shots? Is it just about big fights? Uh, you know, you're Rich Franklin talk about that, that it's no longer about the title frame, it's just about having great moments. What is it for you? Is it still about getting to the top, or are you, you know, just content being a, a great heavyweight putting on great fights? No, I don't like see it in the fact of just trying to put on great fights. Obviously, I think that's an, uh, an outcome of my drive is to actually, you know, work back towards the title. I don't see it as a, a situation where that's no longer within my uh, grasp of uh, the training I'm doing now, the way I'm at in life and stuff. Uh, being only 34 years of age, I don't really see it as an issue to, uh, to, to, uh, to concede to the fact that, oh, I'm only going to fight, you know, uh, to, uh, to be an entertaining fight to add it onto a card. Um, that's just not where I'm at in my life. Excellent. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll take our next question from Victor Garcia with Fox News Latino. How are you doing? Just one question for Anthony. You know, everyone's asking Benson Henderson about the kick and, and getting the, the um, stain off the sole. But for, for you, are you trying to prove in this next fight that you're more than that, just that kick, that, you know, you're, uh, you're a world champion? Oh uh, man, I mean, like like Ben said, I mean that that was a, that was a like, very close fight. Going into that fifth round, you know, it was tied up to the two. So I mean, that right there speaks for itself. It's not like I just wanted to fight off of just one kick. You know, I had, I put the work in in the other rounds to you know, to be in that position. So uh, I mean, I, I, it's one of them one of the things. I'm not gonna live off of it. I mean, it happened. I went past it. It's two years, three years later, uh, I got a I got I got to fight him again, and he's the champ. So just because I landed that kick, I'm, I'm still not the champ. So I, I got a lot to prove and. I got, I got a lot to, to work for. Thanks, Anthony. And as a reminder, again, if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1. We'll take our next question from John Pettis with Fighters.com. The question is, can you compare and contrast a little bit from the UFC that you were in when it, when it started before and uh, to what it is now? And um, Frank, you after. Yeah, we're all here, I believe. Uh, are you, is that a question aimed towards me? You cut out right when you... you oh, I'm sorry, Josh. Yeah, but my question is, is, can you compare and contrast the UFC to where you were before to what it is now? Compare and contrast? Wow, I feel like I'm back in middle school, but yes. Um, sure. Uh, I thought when there was no money for fighting, really. I thought when you couldn't even buy MMA gear at your local sports store or whatever, you had to make it ourselves. I thought when most of the time we didn't even wear gloves. Um, there, we we were under attack from all angles and, and a lot of the providers that would that could offer our pay-per-views uh, had disappeared. So there wasn't really a, an audience hardly. There wasn't much fame. The only real reason to do it is because you just had a had a never-ending desire to get in there and bathe in blood. So today, there is the opportunity 
to branch out and, and to be a part of things that are outside of fighting and you know, a broader acceptance from uh, a mainstream public and uh, there's a lot more notoriety with this and uh, a much bigger public spotlight that comes with it. Uh, and as far as making a living, it's, it's a far better uh, opportunity now than it, than it was when I started. But uh, I think that a lot of guys fight not for the reasons that we used to fight for and that there's a lot of guys that they get in here and they just want to get in and run think that they're going to be famous make a lot of money what have you and then they fight for glory where we fought for for blood and for honor and uh there's still great true fighters coming out of this but these guys aren't quite as tough as they used to be they're, they're way better athletes they're much better prepared but some of these guys just don't they don't have that grit uh, I think I'm going to, to kind of just go off the road with Josh <laughs> I remember when I first started and finally signed the UFC contract I didn't brag to anybody about it it wasn't something you went and told a girl when you're trying to go out on a date with that you were aspiring to beat people up uh, in the octagon in fact if I even tried to describe it a few times it was like no one had a clue what you were talking about. So it wasn't something really to uh, to, to, to garner fans or to, 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 you know, if I would pick up a girl and told her father, yeah, it's not being a fighter for a living. It's the quickest way to end a date. But um, nowadays I see guys all the time that everybody wants to be a fighter. 90% of the people that I meet the fight, I've never seen them or heard of them before in my life. And now it's, you know, it's the cool thing to be uh, in the octagon. It wasn't that way back in the day. Again, to ask a question, there is star one. We'll take our next question from Jacob Harris with 411 Media.com. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, first question uh, for Anthony Pettis. Uh, you got a lot of flack and uh, criticism uh, from the fans, especially when you called uh, for this fight. Uh, you originally set to face uh, Jose Aldo. Uh, a lot of fans complain about rankings when fights like this get made, but I look at every rank, every major rankings. Uh, set for MMA, and you're ranked number two or number three above uh, TJ Grant, who was originally set to face Ben Henderson. So what do you think of those criticisms in that case? I mean, everybody's going to have their opinion, man, but uh, for me, uh, my, my whole goal was to get a title shot. So you know, the reason why I chose to fight Jose Aldo was because uh, you know, Ben already had an opponent in Gilbert Melendez and you know, that was back in January. And when I found out they were going to push the fight in August, August 3rd, it was, you know, it was too late. You know, it was already negotiated. So, uh, I mean, you can't you can't blame me for trying to get a title shot. I mean, that's what it's all about. Every every fighter wants to be a champion, and uh, you know, I was I was right there. I'm not getting ready for a title shot since January, and uh, you know, it's August now. So, um, you can't blame me for trying. And and uh, it, at first, I got denied. I mean, Dana said no. It's already it's already set, and I was, it was it was what it was. I was just at home getting ready for the next one. I didn't know what it was going to be, who it was going to be, be against, and you know, this opportunity came about, and I definitely jumped on it. Uh, Anthony, do you regret your pursuit of uh, Jose Aldo considering uh, what happened? And it didn't sound like you were committed to staying at Featherweight anyway. No, you know what? I don't regret it at all. You know, Jose Aldo's a great champion. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of them guys that I feel like I, I can beat anybody. So, uh, you know, I, I just chose to call Jose Aldo for a reason. I just wish the fight would have been a lot sooner. Okay. Question for Frank. What did you uh, learn from that loss to Daniel Cormier? Frank, I'm sorry. Uh, what did you learn from uh, your last loss to Daniel Cormier, and also considering uh, both you and Josh uh, share losses to him and some other common opponents as well? Um, honestly, I just more confidence in the training than I had done. I mean, one thing, and everybody here on the line can tell you that, just because you do it in the gym doesn't mean necessarily you can do it in a fight with the lights wrong. And so being in Jackson and having a high out and being able to be have great conditioning, I just didn't have the confidence in the fight. And then the thing is that, you know, Cormier is really not much of a finisher. Both my and uh, Josh and I fight, you basically just opposition us and grind it out of fight. But it allowed me to stay in it long enough to realize, well, man, my gas tank is actually really good. And that's why I came on so hard in the third round, because it actually gave me confidence. I wish I had had that going into the fight, but at least I had it exiting the fight. Thank you, gentlemen. Or take our next question from Mike Chiapetta with Fox Sports. Hi guys, I kind of joined the, the call midway, so I apologize if this asked before. But uh, Sir Benson and Anthony, you guys have been linked together since that first fight. People talk about you guys kind of together all the time. 
are you okay with it if you're linked together for the rest of your careers? And, and have you come to terms with that possibility that that might be the case? Uh, well, I guess uh, I've never once asked that. That's a pretty good question. And I will say that is an original question. You, sir, get, uh, get props for that. Uh, I've never once considered that. I've never once thought about it. Um, as far as being linked together forever and stuff, it sounds kind of odd. It sounds kind of uh, a little weird, I guess. But no, it is what it is. Uh, this is a, a tough fighter, you know. Um, explosive. Uh, does some crazy stuff. Um, I'm sure he'll he'll be around the sport for a long time. I I fully intend on being around the sport for a long time. Um, being well known for being the champ for a long time. So far, I guess for uh, linked together or whatever. Like I guess anytime you fight somebody, you guys are kind of linked together. Um, but you know, I, that's, I guess that's the way it plays out. That's the way it plays out. That's the way it plays out. Yeah, I think uh, I think people link us together because uh, you know we, we come from the WC. I mean, we both came over, um, you know, and uh, I, I beat him the last fight, and he came over and did his thing in the UFC. I mean, both of us are at the top of the UFC division, and most critics said you know WC guys were inferior to these UFC guys, and, and we both proved we proved it wrong. So uh, I think we'll, we will be linked together, but I mean, after this fight, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. If somebody's gonna win, someone's gonna lose, and I think we can both go our, our separate ways in our careers. Did you guys ever have any period in time where you kind of sat down and talked about the first fight? I mean, I don't know if you ever thought you'd fight again. So maybe maybe you guys had a time where you were in the same place at the same time and you talked about it. Has that ever happened or not? No, we, uh, we, we never sat down and, and, and discussed it. Um, in my head, I, I knew that we'd be uh, facing off at some point in time again. So there's, uh, I guess, not a real big need for that or anything like that, you know? Yes, I mean, I mean, we uh, we both knew we'd be fighting each other again, man. I mean, I seen what he was doing in the UFC, and uh, and I wanted to be there, so uh, we 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 knew we'd be fighting each other again. Okay, and then finally, going back to the first time you fought, what are your memories of that whole time period? Not necessarily, you know, the fight itself, but you know, any memories going through training camp or or, or that week of the fight that you know. Maybe, you know, the nerves of it or some story that happened, uh, anything that sticks out about that to you guys? Um, I was I was glad it was in Arizona because it was winter in Milwaukee. So, uh, you know, it was a hometown throwdown again, and, you know, Phoenix Phoenix won that, that challenge, and uh, I got to go out to Arizona in winter. So that was that was a cool thing about it. And, I mean, it was another fight. I mean, I was I was, uh, I was supposed to lose that fight. I wasn't supposed to win. I mean, I was just coming up the WC ladder. You know, the USC was about to take over the WC. So, uh I mean, it was, it was a lot at stake, and, you know, for me, I just, I had nothing to lose. Uh, yeah, I think, that's like, um, pretty much a lot of things. Uh, remember the, the hometown throwdown was a pretty contest, so a lot of my, uh, my gym, a lot of my friends and family up here in Phoenix, they, uh, pushed pretty hard to make sure that Phoenix won it. You know, I know the, the U.S. give out a whole lot of things. Uh, they, they didn't give Phoenix, uh, anything, but Phoenix had to go out there and earn it. They won it. They, uh, you know, did, did what they had to do. Um, so I, that's a lot of what I remember um, from that, you know, like time period and stuff, which is uh, how many crazy people, crazy fans, awesome, uh, that really, really wanted a, a UFC event, uh, a Zufa event, you know, the WC event uh, here in Phoenix. And, you know, they uh, worked their butt off and, and earned it and got it. And then after after it happened and you lost, I mean, did, how did how did the fans uh, kind of receive you? I mean, did, did they kind of help soften the blow for you? Uh, well, my gym, like they did a great job. I, I I'm pretty biased, you know. We all love our gyms and stuff, but I, I really do, you know, love my gym. I uh, love the the guys who came there, uh, the families, uh, the moms and dads, uh, the little kids who came my gym. Uh, I know that, you know, they go back there whether it's a win or a loss or what kind of win it is, you know, uh, I always got great support from, from my team, from, from the area, from the city of Phoenix. Um, so, it, yeah, coming, coming back home is always nice. Um, you know, after, after the loss, they were you know, very supportive. You know, um, definitely had no, uh, for me, nothing to, to complain about at all for, for Phoenix. Okay, thanks for the time, guys. I appreciate it. And there are no further questions at this time. Mr. Schaller, I'll turn the call back over to you for any additional or closing remarks. Thanks, Camille, and thanks to everyone who joined the call today, particularly Benson, Anthony, Frank, and Josh. 
It is a loaded week next week. Uh, we'll kick things off Wednesday on Fox Sports 1 with Condit versus Campman 2, plus Donald Cerrone versus Rafael Dos Anjos. That's from the Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Tickets still available. And then we roll into Milwaukee Saturday, August 31st for UFC 164. We'll have full press schedules available this week for both of those events. And we look forward to seeing everyone next week in Indianapolis. And then on to Milwaukee for the lightweight title fight between Benson Henderson and Anthony Pettis. Have a great day, guys.